Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be playing another game of Total War Warhammer. This is going to be a pure multiplayer battle, so we're not going to try to assassinate lords. We're going to have a nice, clean, fun game. I think uh, I'm going to try out the green skins this time. Let's go for a quick battle. So I did a little bit of research, and a lot has changed in patch 1.2. I had played the dwarfs. Um, it's kind of a mixed bag. I've played a lot of dwarves, well, a lot relative to the other races in my channel. Um, but uh, it's, I thought they were going to be really strong in this patch, but the play style that I had been using, I'm not sure is optimal. Um, well, I know it's not, and I've said that before, but some viewers wanted to see me try a different style out, and I have, and it's been a lot of fun, so I appreciate the, um, the suggestion to run for more of this kind of ag aggressive offensive orc build. The problem is, against greenskins, um, it's just too hard to deal with Doom Divers with that kind of build. You have to have artillery superiority, which means you're not going to be able to protect your flanks as well, which means you need to be able to use the edge of a map to um, guard your flanks. You're going to have to use the terrain. I mean, this is what dwarves would do in the lore, right? Like, there's not going to be quote-unquote an edge of the map, but they would fight in the mountains or near the mountains, right? Because they know they're short, they're immobile, uh, but they're powerful in close quarters if they can't get flanked. And so makes sense but anyways we're gonna try out the um, <clears throat> the green skins this time there's been a lot of changes I just looked through and they are so cost-effective it's crazy for a lot of the things that they get especially with their heroes and their lords now so I've kind of been you know I haven't played as much multiplayer as a lot of other people that you know are really dedicated to playing these multiplayers Yo, are we gonna get this match or what like I have no idea. I'll give it a few more seconds, then we'll just retry. Um, but I think um, I think the potions in particular on the orcs are very, very strong. I don't know if other factions get those or not. I know the dwarves do not. Um, but you can get an orc war boss, who's already pretty formidable, um, and you can get two potions that basically refill like half of his health bar. It seems like it's a lot. In one of my past episodes, we saw that happen to us, and I didn't understand what was going on, but now after I look at the their builds a little more closely, or look at just the green skins roster a little more closely, you can get it. It's only 70, like 72, 73 gold per potion, so for 150 gold you get two of them. So that almost gives you 100% extra health for 150 gold on a war boss, who already has decent armor and can tank a lot, and does pretty nice damage output, so... That's really strong. He's also extremely cheap if you get rid of a lot of his perks that you're probably not going to use. Um, okay, we're just going to cancel that. I don't know what's going on here, but that's ridiculous. Um, well, while we wait on that, just so we get matched up with somebody else, I'll just show you just real quick what I'm thinking about. Um, now, I have a, I don't have an entire roster built out because the green skins are very, very versatile, and I'm still not sure what the correct answer is. Um, but I think almost more so than any other faction. At least, I don't know if that's true, but a lot. They have a lot of versatility, so I want to wait and see which faction they pick before I select the rest of my units. But um, they have a lot of different things. So what I'm talking about with this war boss here, I think that now Azog and Grimgor are overpriced for what they are. I'll show you why here real quick. So Grimgor, you get 450 weapon strength. Um... You get a 65 charge bonus, 110 armor. Man, normal war boss, you're only going to get 70 armor. And, uh... You're still going to get 450 weapon strength. Not as much in terms of uh, armor piercing, but still, it's 450 weapon strength. Charge bonus is the same. Now, this guy has 70-35 on Grimgor. It's a 64-44. It's a very, very similar stats. 35 speed, 38 speed. 75 leadership, 70 leadership. So very, very similar. But Grimgor costs twice as much. Just or not twice as much, but like 50% more. It's a lot more. Um, and what do you get for that price? Well, he has all the same abilities as the other guy. And his only item he can get is Gitsnick, which costs 225 gold and really doesn't do that much, I don't think. It's on a 135 second cooldown. You're only going to use it once per fight. Like it's not really that impressive. So look at Ozog now. Ozog is extremely expensive now. Um, but let's say we just get rid of his things we don't need here, his spells. Okay, so 
Uh, we'd probably want that. And it's relatively cheap, it's only 40 gold. It's pretty good. Uh, just get rid of these to drop costs a little bit. We'll keep this one, that one's really good. How much is it? 116? Pretty good bargain. Um, and we just want Fate of Buna. And Spirit Leech, because Fate of Buna has a one minute cooldown basically now, so we want another spell that we can do in the meantime. So probably Spirit Leech if we wanted to go that route. Um, and items he can only get poison, which, I mean, not really that inspiring. This is without a mount, and so he does probably about the same amount of damage as an orc war boss. But he doesn't have the potions. He can get Skull Munch. Um, but the, this guy can get a Wyvern also if you really want it. So I, I just think that it's overpriced. I mean, yeah, you do get some spells with him. Maybe I'm incorrect. Maybe this is still a good bargain. Uh, but I would much rather use that mana on the Night Goblin Shaman, which we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, but let's just say we want this war boss. Um, I like him with the boar. We'll see, but... The reason is you get a nice charge bonus, you get an 85 charge bonus, which is a lot. It's 20 more. Now you get your armor piercing damage that we were missing with Grimgore, right? So just for 250 more gold, we get the armor piercing damage. We get a lot of speed, 62 speed, we still get decent armor. Um, and yeah, and we keep a good melee attack of 64. Now for 300 more, you can get the uh, Wyvern here, but... You're only getting a little bit more charge, a little bit more weapon strength, you're losing melee attack, which, I mean, you should be cycling charges anyways. You are gaining a ton of speed, which is nice, and you're gaining terror. So there could be a time and a place for using the Wyvern, depending on what your build is, but I think the Warbore is a good sort of middle ground, if you're not really sure, because you still get good mobility, you still get a good charge bonus, um, but you get to save 300 gold doing that. Um, and then I just get rid of Foe Seeker, I mean... You can keep it if you want. It's kind of expensive, 73 for just a little bit of extra vigor most of the time. Um, I would definitely recommend getting rid of this. You don't. It's a 90 second cooldown. You don't particularly need melee defense as orcs. You should be going offensive, so I would just save the money and get rid of that. You want to keep this though. It is on the expensive side, but 58 extra melee attack is a big deal. And now comes the true power. Two potions. 72 gold each. These replenish a lot because I've seen this firsthand. It is massive. Very, very large amount of health that you can get with these. So I think this is great. He has a good mount. Um, he's still a reasonable price. He has two of the most powerful items you could possibly buy. Uh, he has other flexibility if you want to get the flying mount. Good stats. It's just crazy. Now look at this Night Goblin Shaman now. Now it starts at 1187. But, once you get rid of all the spells you don't need, it's only 382 gold for this guy. Yeah, he can't really fight, um, but the spells are crazy. If you've watched any of my um, Greenskin campaigns, you know that Sneaky Stabbing and Itchy Nuisance are both extremely powerful. Very, very good with orcs. So you can get both of those for the low, low price of 382. Um, now, he doesn't have very good items, but who cares? If you get off a couple of Sneaky Stabbings, and Itchy Nuisance, like, you're probably going to win. If you get to cast two rounds of these spells, you're probably going to win the fight. So, really, really nice. I mean, I wouldn't go for the Great Shaman because you need somebody who can fight and attack, and just those two potions are so strong. But I definitely would get the Night Shaman. Now, it's possible, if you notice, both of these are the price of Azog. So it's entirely possible that you should go Azog here instead. And just use uh, Fate of Buna and Spirit Leech still as your spells. Um, I might try that out in another uh, another game. But I would like to not use Spirit Leech, if at all possible. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I like that. This guy's even crazier, really. I mean, you can get him for as low as uh, 380. Maybe even lower than that. You get it out of 300 for a hero. And he does actually do some pretty good damage, like... Um, he's got, I mean, that's 300 is the price of goblins, like, you know, he has a lot less health than they do, but he does more damage, I think. But yeah, he's, he's really strong. Um, the reason that I like him is you can just put him on a wolf and he gets 94 speed, 
and you can just charge them into the back lines and do quite a lot of damage. Um, you can knock out their artillery, you can just flank and cycle charges with them. Um, there's a, you know, getting the spider is not really that much more, so there's a possibility the spider could be the right move also. You get Strider um, with the spider, which means he's not going to get tired as quickly. Um, you get a little bit more charge bonus, and you get poison attacks. And you get a bit more armor. You lose some speed, but having that poison is really nice too, to charge in the back of something, just get that debuff going. Um, so it's, I might do Spider depending on what the matchup is, but I think that's really strong. And he also has access to this suite of potions. So I think this is the new meta, is get these potions, because they're so good. Um, I only have one on him, I'm going to see how much gold I have left, but I think getting... I'll just go ahead and put the second one on him. Um, we'll save it. Because um, those are just so, so strong. I mean, that basically makes him... doubles his health, I think. So he's at about 7,000 health, so... Yeah, that's really good. Alright, so this is what I'm thinking. I haven't really looked at the Shaman yet. Let me just take a peek here and look at him. He can get a War Boar, which is nice. But that's just more expensive than the Spider or the Wolf. Um, what is this? Improved Power Recharge Rate, how much? 56. That's probably pretty good. How much... All I would want with him is... Uh, this is okay. This is what I would want. So, 12-something. How much is that? It's 234, so it's very expensive. They recognize it's a very good spell. Um, I'm just checking it out here. He can't get the good items, though. So he's double the price of the Night Goblin Shaman. Now he could get that War Boar. That would put him at 1,000 gold, though. I don't know if he's worth double the price, though. I mean, the Shaman's just so cost-effective, the Night Goblin one. I don't know. It's up to you, but I, I think that having Itchy and Sneaky, having both of these, um, is probably as good as just having... Uh, here we go. It's debatable, for sure, but... I think it's at least in the ballpark of being the same. Oh, I can get rid of this. Maybe that'll save some. Yeah, it does save some cost. Um, still, he's still approaching double cost, though. But I, I think it's approaching the same effectiveness. All, he's still garbage in combat. I mean, you could make him okay. What happens if you put the Warbler on him? Let's make him okay. His damage is still really low. Um... Melee attack's still pretty low. I don't think it's worth 350 gold to put the mount on him. Maybe it is if you just want a little bit of extra charging. Like, if you want to run, I could see a build where maybe you run Orc War Boss, your Shaman, um, and the Goblin Boss as your cavalry, and then just invest a lot more in your infantry. So this would still give you some good flanking um, and charge cycling, but it would save you a little bit of cash. I could see that. I might try that out in a later build. There's just so many options. But we're going to go for this to start with. And hopefully, um, we can get a fight this time. It's not going to take 20 minutes to match up. But yeah, that's what our base is, and then it just really depends on what we're facing. I think, you know, with most matches, I would want a core of Black Orcs, so a couple of Black Orcs. Um, I want to try out the Beastmen, too. There's a lot of things that I want to play. Okay, good. So we're getting uh, the matchup from the other side. So hopefully I can win this. <laughs> I spent so much time uh, talking about um, how the Greenskins can beat up on Dwarves. So if I get beat both ways around, I'm going to have to lose some pride, <laughs> I guess. I'm just going to have to admit that I'm bad. I mean, I know I'm bad. It's not a secret. I'm not super great at multiplayer. I haven't practiced a lot of it. Um, but that, that would be pretty embarrassing. Okay, so I definitely want two Doom Divers because those completely wreck orcs or um, dwarves. I want um, three Goblin Archers to protect against um, any of their uh, gyrocopters they have. I want to be able to win the melee combat war, so we're going to go with three Black Orcs. Uh, I would like to get how are we going to deal with the Quarrelers now, is the question. I mean, the Doom Divers are pretty good against the Quarrelers. Um, 
I'll do some. I want to try out some night goblins with fanatics. Just one of them, just to kind of charge in there first and just get some of those fanatics going, get some of the poison on there, and then follow up with the black orcs. That could be wrong. Um, I do want some boar. Let's go ahead and bolster up our line a little bit here. Let's just get. I like the probably just the normal orcs just to save some cost. Let's get, uh... We could get a giant or trolls. I mean, trolls are good. They just buff their leadership quite a lot. I'll go for... Do I want trolls or boar? I think I can do trolls. Um... One unit of trolls... Uh, let's go ahead and upgrade this guy's mount to the spider for the poison. Um, let's do... One unit of... These guys, and we'll just do... Uh, one unit of archers. And that's... that's fine. So yeah, not super experienced as I said with this, but I kind of like this line up here. Um, we've got enough uh, air to ground to handle Thopters, I think. Doom Divers should shatter them, I'm pretty sure. Um, we should be able to win the melee with the kind of line we have going on. We've got a lot of mic rolling to do. Um, but I, th I think we can handle this. I think we can handle this. Now, we don't have much in the way of uh, cavalry. But, I mean, dwarves have defense against large anyways with all of their units, so the cavalry is not always the most effective. Um, but we do have enough cavalry with our war boss. What do we have here? We have... I'm trying to remember. Wa and the pots. Okay. And then this guy... I, I should have bought that last potion. I don't think I have... Or do I have both? I do have both. Okay. Um, so we can put him and the war boss together. Make them our nine group. These guys could be our front line. Um, let's see. We'll make these guys kind of our uh, archer unit, or these guys could be our archer units. Two. We might put them as part of our front line. So I think what we want to do here is force them to come to us. So with these Doom Divers, we should be able to do that. I want to spread out a little bit in case he has artillery also. So we can trade shots. The Doom Divers are way more accurate than most other artillery. Um, hide these over here. Uh, these both have vanguards, so we can just kind of get up here and get a little vision of what's going on. Um, put all of these over here. Just spread out a little bit. You want to kind of stay spread out as orcs because, you, like, surrounding and flanking is really strong. And just in case they have artillery, I'm just going to spread it out. Because we should have a huge numbers advantage on them. So we're just going to spread out until we see what they're doing. Right, so we want to fire into... Do they have any artillery? Okay, so they have zero artillery. Alright, so we want to aim for... Go ahead and shoot these guys and put these on skirmish mode. They have almost no um, range units either. A very, very peculiar build. Um, put these on there as well. What are these? Are these slayers? These are long beards. Okay, so it's just like a long beard rush kind of army. Um, let's go up here and put these guys in skirmish mode, get some shots in. So we just want to, like, start flanking around here and just invite them to come up the middle. We'll leave one battalion of black orcs in here. Alright, let's get out here. Let's 
So we aren't doing a ton of damage right here because they have so much armor, but if we just flank right and start shooting them in the back, that might be worthwhile. Should be kiting back with them, that's good. Oops, let's get over here. Get in here and charge. Let's get over here and mess those up. Go. Uh, get over here. Get over here, deal with that. Let's go ahead and cast some uh, sneaky, itchy right here. Good pop potions, run out of there. Uh, I forgot about the trolls. Okay, we get the trolls right here. Tear them up. That's fine. Flank around. I need to get into these. So let's go ahead and charge in there. Let's put some sneaky in here. Get these charges going. Let's get in here and deal with that. All right, let's flank these guys in the back. Where's this guy? Okay, so he's rallied back. Um, I think we can get over here and deal with this. All right, so we've done some damage there. Let's get back over here. Uh, Sneaky's gonna be up soon. I don't really care if they get the Doom Divers at this point. Um, let's go ahead and shoot over here. Charge into them. Slippery. Alright, we got that done. Alright, let's. Uh, do we want Itchy or Sneaky? Uh, I think we want Sneaky here. Let's go Sneaky. Get some more hits in there. Uh, we can probably charge in there at this point. I'm probably shooting my own trolls in the back there, so that was probably really bad. I should not have done that. Um, okay, let's go ahead and pop this. Let's get over here, deal with that. Um, I think this is pretty much locked up. Let's go over here and get this. They're sending a lot of resources to go after my um, Doom Divers, which is fine at this point. I'm cool with that. We should be tearing all this up. Yes, that healed so much. Now the boar is going to go in there. Mess that up. Let's get these out of here. Their Lord is doing pretty well. But, you know, our Black Horse are also doing quite well here. Um... I'd cast some sneaky right here, just make sure we clean this up. Let's get the shaman out of here. Get the trolls back over here. Let's get over here and deal with those. Got them beaten up. Uh, let's just forget this lord, he's tied up here. Um, 
we're just really not doing a lot of damage to him. We need our war boss over there. We just want to go for all of his, um... Look over there at the Black Orcs now, probably. Alright, yeah, that'll probably be good. All they have left are their lords, really. Which we should be able to deal with. I'm going to pick this one off first. Actually, let's go ahead and pick this one up. I'm not sure who this is, but we'll get him. Go ahead and use a little wall here. That should help us out. Uh, let's get back on these Doom Divers. And this should be hurting this guy pretty badly. Let's go charge into them. Okay, so they are rallying back a little bit here. Goblins. Let's get in here and charge this. Uh, let's get the goblin here. Uh, this goblin. Sneaky. So I'm just putting this over here just to get some poison on this guy, just to lower his uh, his damage a little bit. And we do have... These guys should be running back over here. There we go. Get on those Doom Divers. So we should be tearing these guys up, I think, right? Yeah, get the Runesmith first, because he has the magic. This... Um, I want to save up for Itchy, I think. Or, um, Sneaky here. I just want to get a full surround on this guy, make sure he dies. Um, okay, good. Okay, sweet. So I got some redemption here with this fight. Hopefully I didn't lose like a million subscribers by posting those two losses up with the dwarves. I'm always a little hesitant to post losses. Um... Just because I'm afraid people will think, oh, this guy sucks, or whatever, and not, you know, not uh, not watch anything else, right? Like, they're just, like, instant, you know, unsubscribe, disappear. But, you know, I think most people that are watching this, you know, and just Total War enthusiasts in general, are going to be a little bit more mature about that. And just people watching any game that really want serious entertainment out of it. Because if someone only posts up games that they win, there's no drama. You know they're always going to win, and I just think it makes for less entertainment. So as long as, you know it's a good game and it's a loss so as long as it's not a stomp either way and as long as we're learning things from it and you know I'm showing you guys and gals how to become better players and I'm kind of learning along with it listening to your comments um, I think it's definitely worth posting up um, so yeah so I do like to post losses sometimes you know and that's sort of the same philosophy that I take with the legendary campaigns I deliberately get into fights that are very challenging where I, yeah I could have waited a couple extra turns and had an easier fight but sometimes I deliberately look for really tough fights just for the entertainment value just for the challenge just for the fun of it right um, and so I do know that a lot of the things that I well not a lot but some of the things that I do aren't optimal especially because I don't auto resolve in the campaign you know some people might be thinking oh well, if you just auto resolve that of course you would have had a much better outcome. It's like, yeah, but I'm not looking for the outcome. I'm looking for the experience, right? For both me and for you. Like, I want just a good entertainment, educational experience. It's a good challenge. Um, so I do like to post up losses from time to time. And we do lose battles occasionally in the campaign. Now, not to the point where we're actually going to lose a campaign. I think we're in good shape there. Spoiler alert, all the campaigns are doing very well. But um, I think that I just like some drama, you know? I just like some some uncertainty in there. That's what life's all about. If everyone knew everything that was going to happen in their life, like, I don't know. That's getting deeply philosophical again. Sometimes I go off on these rants, but I think that one of the great things about life and just, you know, experience in general is uncertainty. 
it makes for drama. It makes for fun. It makes for meaning. You know, you don't know if that girl's going to go out on a date with you or not. You don't know um, if you're going to get that job or not when you go in for the interview. You don't know um, all of these things. And it could be stressful, but it's also very exciting and adds meaning to your life. If you really step back and think about it, you know, sometimes some of the best experiences of your life were things that were unexpected, right? It were things that... Um, that you were not certain about, that you really had to challenge yourself and strive for, right? Where it was a real challenge. A lot of things in life that are just, you know, if things are handed to you or if um, you already know the outcome of it, if, you, if you're already certain, then it's going to probably be a lot less fun, right? It's going to, it's just not going to mean as much to you. So, anyways, that's, so I will post up those other games. Hopefully I don't lose too many subscribers um, off of those other games sorry if i mean i guess i just kind of spoiled them um if you uh <laughs> if you haven't watched those yet i won't say which ones they are maybe you've read through the lines and figured them out because i'm going to post a bunch up at the same time uh, but that's just my philosophy behind why i post losses sometimes i just like to keep the excitement there just add a little bit more meaning to the viewing experience even if it does cost me a couple of subscribers every now and then i think most of you guys and gals will understand that and can appreciate that um especially since i kind of just explained my reasoning a little bit hopefully um that makes sense okay so what do we learn here um what did well on their side okay so these Longbeards did pretty well. This one pack. I wonder what they were fighting. They were probably the ones that were up near the the northern half there that were fighting, like, goblins or something. I don't remember. Um, these Doomdivers did their work, right? Like, he ended up going for the Doomdivers and getting a good, uh, getting a good fight. But, uh, you know, they still killed 72. That's by far the most of anything in the whole... Well, actually, no. These Black Orcs and these Black Orcs killed more. Um, but that's a big deal. And I, I don't agree with him. I guess he did have two Thunderers, so it's okay. I'm really not a fan of these Iron Breakers. Like, yeah, they can, can kind of hold the line, but the problem is against a player when you're not playing on the campaign map. And I don't even know if... I will get them in the campaign just for fun. We haven't got them yet. Um, I'm just not sure about this. Like, the Dwarves are already defensive enough, and they're just so expensive. I think if he had some Quarrelers, um, it would have... It would have behooved him to have some quarrelers here against because greenskins don't typically have a lot of armor with the exception of black orcs so i think it would have been very helpful for him to have a little bit more armor uh or just to have a bit more units now you saw my strategy there which i like is the greenskins i think the greenskins are awesome fun first of all i've i think i explained that I don't remember if it was the beginning of this video or what, but they are a lot of fun. I know they get a bad rap by some streamers who can abuse auto-resolve and things like that, but they really do have a lot of unit diversity and strategic options, and they're just, they're great. Um, and you saw my strategy there was to break him up. I wanted to completely surround him. I did not want him to form up a nice tight line like the dwarves want to do. This is the danger if you don't have artillery with dwarves, and especially if you don't have a lot of range units, you can get surrounded and flanked like I did. I mean, I had a nice sort of a semi-circle surround going on him. I didn't get full circle, but we were able to charge into the back and to move around pretty freely with these orcs. Now, he also sent, like, two or three units chasing these goblin archers, right? Because they feel so pesky, like they're just raining arrows down on you. Uh, but really, they don't kill that much. I mean, however, relative to their cost, like this, they only cost, like, 300 gold, I think, or maybe 350, something like that. But they killed 20 units, whereas uh, these cost like 750 gold, and these only killed 9, 2, and 1. So yeah, they don't have a lot of kills, um, but they have kills against uh, dwarves, which are have a ton of armor, are very high, highly powered, and um, yeah, they're just very cost effective. I didn't even notice that he had slayers. I need to pay better attention to that. Um, I should have had these archers on the slayers. But I just put them in skirmish mode, and because they're dwarves, they don't have anything to run them down. He should have, he should not have chased them with melee, because then you have, you know, a 750 unit chasing a, you know, 350 unit, and that's just not a good trade. They're, the goblins are going to be able to run away. Um, so that was a mistake on his part. He should have just put these thunderers, trained them on. Oh, he put ranks in the thunderers too. Wow. He should have put the thunderers on the goblins. And just left everything else alone and just tried to surround my guys. Um, 
his lords did very well. I don't the I, I don't remember if the Thane has the potions or not. If the Thane has the potions, I might have to run more of them with the dwarves. I think they might have the potions. Really, it's all about these potions, honestly. Like this guy used two potions. Uh and he filled almost all the way up his health. This guy used a potion, or maybe two, I don't remember. He filled all the way up. Like, those potions are so strong. I think they probably need to nerf those, honestly. They probably need to be, like, 100 gold each, maybe, instead of 70. Um, but I do like that they are making it to where it's much harder to snipe lords because of those potions, if you get the right lords. I think every lord should probably have access to those because they're just... It's very imbalanced that only a couple of them do. Like, why does he have them, but... Um, why does the cheap lord have them, but someone like Grim Ward doesn't have them? It doesn't make sense. So, from his side, I think it proved that the Thanes were really good. Um, still unimpressed with these long beards. They're okay, but I don't, I don't think they're worth it unless the enemy is going to be causing a lot of psychological effects, like terror, fear, things like that. Um, these guys are just not good anymore. I don't think. Slayers are still good, but I didn't have a lot of large units. So if I had boars or something, slayers would be better. That's always a predicament with dwarves, is you don't know if they're going to run boars or not. Um, the only thing that slayers could have hit was these trolls, and they may have gone into the trolls, I don't know. Um, but the trolls were pretty good. I mean, they're able to kind of just tie up some units for a little while. Yes, they did run away, but they did rally back. And they still got 24 kills. So they're not my most efficient unit. I didn't use them optimally either. I kind of forgot about them in the back. I should have had them on these uh, Thunders a lot faster and just been cycling charges into the back because they have a really nice charge bonus. So I kind of goofed up with the microing of the trolls. But I think with that buff, that 5 buff to their leadership, I think they're definitely worth it. Especially against other players who don't get the legendary, where I don't get the legendary penalty to their leadership. I think they're really nice. This guy really outperformed. Like He's so cheap. Um, I think I put him on the spider, I can't remember, but I was just able to move around, tie up units, flank, had both of those potions. This guy is just really, really good. I might even consider getting a second one of these. Um, 41 kills, he only cost 500 gold. It's like half of what the trolls cost, and he was in the fight a lot. Like, he was really stuck with some tough units. Um, so I think that was definitely an outperformance. Uh, Black Orcs, we all know they're good. I mean, you just want to get a couple of those every time. Um, orc boys did the job. These night goblins, wow, they really outperformed. They killed 64 units. These are dwarves, too. It's not like they're killing goblins. They're killing dwarves. And they only cost, like, 500 gold or something. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on these. I was very, very impressed with their performance. I don't even know. What were they killing? Like, it, maybe they killed the slayers. I don't know. That's because they deal almost no damage, so I don't know how they did that. Maybe the Fanatics did a lot of damage. I'm not really sure, but this looks really nice. Um, and these guys just had some really good harassment. Like, they're just stacking the poison on there um, and just kiting around. Like, they're all very cheap units. So, yeah, I like this composition. I think this was good fun. Um, and I'm happy to play the Greenskins. I need to play more of them. I'm, I'm really digging the Greenskins now. I think they're a lot of fun. Lots of strategic options. I still do love my dwarves, but. As we saw here, and if you've watched some previous videos, I kind of spoiled it already, but maybe not. Um, this is a bad, bad matchup, and I just feel like a lot of matchups against dwarves are still going to be really bad. Maybe I need to run more Thanes with those potions. Maybe that's the trick, is run like three Thanes with the potions, make them my front line, and then do something else. Like maybe have less dwarf warriors, um, and just get some more utility things. I don't know. I'll definitely play the dwarves again, but I need to rethink my strategy a little bit here, especially against greenskins. But that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much. I know this one's longer than usual, but this was my first greenskin um, episode of patch 1.2, or just period, on the channel. Um, so I just really wanted to explain sort of my reasoning and my thinking behind different picks. Um, and I welcome your comments. Like, there's just so much diversity with the orcs. I just, I can't overstate that. Just how much fun they are to try to design a um, an army composition with them because everything's so viable it's just so cheap um, and there's so many options like do you go big do you go for the black orcs do you go for the expensive stuff trolls black orcs spiders giants do you go small with goblins like how do you balance that out do you go for artillery they have some of the best artillery in the game um 
They have some of the best magic in the game with the Night Goblin Shaman, but they don't feel overpowered. Like, all of this feels like you have to have really good micromanagement and really good army composition selection and game knowledge. And I don't have a ton of game knowledge for multiplayer. Um, but this is a lot of fun. So, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, check out more multiplayer battles. I'm going to be posting up a lot tonight. I know I've been remiss in not posting these up recently. I do apologize. I'm definitely going to do more. There's really no excuse. It only takes like 20 minutes to do a multiplayer battle. So, I'll definitely post more of these up. I know they're very popular on the channel, so I just, I really don't have a good excuse. I'm sorry, guys and gals. I let you down on that. Uh, but I'll make it up to you. I'll do a lot more. Um, and then we also have legendary campaigns going, which I think I mentioned earlier, but I can't remember if that was this episode or last, but we have a great legendary greenskins campaign. Um, it's a ton of fun. We don't abuse the auto resolve system. Uh, you get lots of great diversity in there, kind of like what you saw in this battle. Lots of good micromanagement. Um, and we also have campaigns for everything except for chaos. We will do chaos soon, but not yet. Um, it's just too many campaigns trying to do five at once is really hard to keep up with i can't even do them all every day i try to do every other day at least to get them in there i still release three or four videos every day but it's just i just don't have time to do five every single day um but do check those out there a ton of fun we also have league of legends if you're interested in that I, I play support every single game and try to carry it a diamond without having a dedicated duo partner so i just try to demonstrate that um, just through good intelligent thinking, good decisions, you can make your way to Diamond, even if you're perhaps not the greatest mechanical player in the world. I know I'm certainly not. I'm okay, uh, but I'm 32, and my reflexes just aren't what they used to be when I was you know, 14, 15. So um, I definitely feel you on that if you're kind of an older gamer. I know that the demographic of my channel is a bit older, and I salute you um, <laughs> for sticking with, uh, sticking with gaming. I don't think it's a young person's thing anymore like it was when I was you know, 15, and probably when a lot of you guys and gals were younger too, you know, I think video gaming used to be, for the most part, relegated to boys, and boys that are, you know, teenagers and young 20s type of thing, but I think that that's quickly becoming um, obsolete, an obsolete stereotype, right? Like, I think a lot more um, girls, young women, heck, older women, I think they're all playing it, um, and I think that older men are playing it as well. I think it's starting to transcend a lot of boundaries and the people realizing that gaming is, I think, the best form of media because you get to interact with it, right? You get to choose, you, you get to really refine your experience in a way that you can't do with just movies or TV. There is lots of good TV out there. I love Game of Thrones. If you've never watched that, you definitely should, and you should read the books. They're awesome. Um, so there is still good TV out there. There's some decent movies, but I'm really kind of concerned with the direction that movies have gone in the last few years, but that's a different discussion that I won't go into here. Um, just in terms of, like, the lack of creativeness. Like, I know that they're trying to do throwbacks, and I do like seeing some of these remakes. Um, just the idea of it, just stuff from my childhood or young adulthood that was a lot of fun that they're remaking. Uh, but I just feel like there's a lot of... They're really lowering the standards for creativity and innovative thinking, I feel like, quite a lot in movies. Um, most movies in the last 10 years. There are still some good ones. Um, but anyways, gaming, yeah, has its... You get to interact with it. You get to tailor your experience in a way that you just can't do with other forms of media. And I think there's a lot to that. I think it's, it's really good aesthetically for our culture to do that. And I know there still is a stigma about gaming a little bit that... You know, a lot of people think, oh, well, that's just for young people or it's just for people that aren't professionals and things like that. That's totally false. Like, I teach at a university, um, and I still like gaming. I think it's a lot of fun. I would consider myself an intellectual and a professional, and I, I think it's great. Um, so, anyways, that's going to be it. I'm um, sorry this is kind of a long-winded episode. As I explained before, I just wanted to go through some strategic considerations there um, just because it's the first green skin episode. The future ones will be faster for sure. But thank you very much. It's going to be it for this episode. It's always a pleasure broadcasting for you, and I hope you have a wonderful evening.